Good morning. For the two that's in here, stand for the reading of God's word. This morning we're going to be in uh, Psalms 36, 1 through 14. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to God, God of gods. His lo- steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him alone does great wonder, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who, by understanding, made the heavens, his steadfast love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who made the great light, for his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day, for his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and stars to rule over the night, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, his steadfast love endures forever. And brought Israel out from among them, his steadfast love endures forever. With a strong hand and stretched out arm, his steadfast love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two, his steadfast love endures forever. And made Israel pass through the midst of it. His steadfast love endures forever. Father, thank you for your steadfast love, Lord. Through this time of of awkwardness, of how we're gathering, Lord, through Facebook, Lord, I thank you for the technology that, that sometimes is so bad. But, Father, you're using it for your glory. And we praise you for it. We thank you for the steadfast love that endures forever. Because even though we may be anxious or or don't know what's going on, Father, you do. You're there. You're already there tomorrow. You know what's going on. And, Father, through your word this morning, we see that you love us no matter what. Father, we thank you and praise you for it. In your son's precious and holy name, amen. Sing with us as you're at home. We don't have to be in this building just to sing. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. With the mighty hand. And now stretched on His love endures forever For the life that has been reborn His love endures forever Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Forever God is faithful Forever God is with us forever. 
We need to hear a message like that today, that God is forever faithful, strong, and with us. I want to welcome you right now to Harmony Baptist Church, a church that exists to make disciples of all people in all places to the glory of God. I know that this morning it may be a little different for you as it is for us that are here in Edgemore. You're watching from your TV or maybe you're watching from your phone or you're watching in front of your computer. I'm going to encourage you to do a couple of things this morning. The first is I want you to interact. I want you to participate and I want you to take part in worship just like you were sitting here in a pew wherever you are. I want you to do that this morning. So lean in interact, engage with a sermon. Maybe there's an amen or a hallelujah that is uh, somewhere that you're going to put. Interact and be part of the church that is worshiping. You know, we are the church, right? This is a building, but where you're sitting this morning, you are the church. There's a couple of other things. We have an online bulletin that is on our Facebook page and on our website. So if you want to look for that online bulletin, that's going to give you the uh, lyrics for the songs that we're singing. It's going to give you the instructions or a place where you can take notes for our sermon. Everything you need to know about a worship experience this morning can be found there. So look on our website, look on our Facebook page uh, for that online bulletin. And as well, if you're watching on Facebook, I want you to do a watch party right now. So you can do that from your Facebook live feed. You can host a watch party where you're going to tell your friends, hey, will you tune in and hear what God is doing at Harmony? So this morning, we normally use this time to welcome and greet, so it's going to be the same. So here's what I want you to do. For about 10 seconds, I want you to pipe in, if you haven't already, and say, hey, I'm here, I'm watching, tell us where you are, tell us who you are, and we want to see who's participating this morning. So do that right now. I'm sure all over the screen there's people who are saying, hey, I'm watching in my pajamas, maybe not, or I'm watching in my living room, <laughs> or we're here Awesome. Good to see you. Let's continue to worship. When the solid ground is falling down from underneath my feet, between the black skies and my red eyes, I can barely see. When I'm feeling like I've been let down by my friends and my family, I can hear the rain reminding me in the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. When my hopes and dreams are far from me and I'm running out of faith, I see the future I picture slowly fade away. And when the tears and pain and heartache are pouring down my face, I find my peace in Jesus' name In the eye of the storm You remain in control In the middle of the war You guard my soul You alone are the anchor When my sails are torn Your love surrounds me In the eye of the storm When they let me go, and I just don't know how I'm going to make ends meet. I did my best, now I'm scared to death, we might lose everything. And when a sickness takes my child away, and there's nothing I can do. My only hope is trust in you. I trust you, Lord. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. 
Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. You remain in control in the middle of the war. You guide my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Come on now my fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your love. Shame no longer has a place to hide. And I am not a captive to the lies. I'm not afraid to leave my past behind. Oh, I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. So my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. There's power that can break off every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. Power in your name. I'll sing it again. There's power that can break off every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name, power in your name. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your At this time in our service, we're going to stop and have a moment of prayer. So I know over the last few minutes uh, on the Facebook uh, feed or live feed, you have been sharing uh, prayer requests. And, and I'm going to lift up a few of those. This morning, we're going to pray for the Lemons, uh, Lemons family, excuse me, praying for Mike Allen. We're also pray, praying for the people who are unemployed. Maybe they've been affected by work uh, due to the COVID-19 virus. And uh, speaking of which, we're praying for that as well this morning. Uh, children who are out of school, uh, there's a lack of stability in a lot of families. Someone shared 
uh, praying for Lois Campbell and, and Mary Gordon. We're going to lift them up and pray for uh, them this morning. We also have a church planter's uh, wife, uh, Megan Egler. We're praying for her this morning. Those who are on the front lines of uh, serving our community, whether it be in the medical profession or those who are on the front lines serving uh, during this uh, time, we're going to pray for that. Also praying for wisdom that comes only for God, for our leaders, not only in our churches, but our leaders in our country. Right now, if you have something else that you want uh, to lift up, I want to encourage you to do that. You can do that by typing right in the comments. And we have folks who are praying over those requests, even this moment, who are praying over those requests, things that you are lifting up. So we want you to do that. If you're at home with me, if you're watching with me, let's bow in prayer. God, I thank you for this day. Lord, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Sometimes, God, in the middle of a storm, in the middle of a trial, God, it can be hard to have joy. But as James said, God, count it all joy. Even this, count it all joy. Because we know, God, that your hand is working. Lord, we lift up each and every one of the prayer requests that have been mentioned in person or have been mentioned on our Facebook page, have been mentioned on our live feed this morning. Lord, you are the God who hears. You are the God who saves. And God, you are innately interested in what's going on in our lives. God, it's hard to understand right now how we, being so weak and little and small in the grand scheme of things, that God, you are so interested. But we understand this, that you loved us so much that, God, you sent your very son. If it had only been me, God, you would still have sent Jesus to die, to be able to restore a relationship with you, to help us, God, to be able to restore our right design, to be in communion and fellowship with you. God, you love us. Lord, I thank you for the worship this morning. God, the message of those songs that speak so dearly to our heart that, God, we can have no fear because, God, you are with us. I thank you for the love that's abounding in that. This morning, wherever we're at, wherever we're hearing God's word this morning, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will speak into our lives, that, God, you will use this situation. We're already seeing it, God, in the Harmony family and elsewhere. We're already seeing, God, a way that you're using this trial to open people's eyes. Right now, there's people who are saying, I'm coming face to face with the reality that life may be at its end. And even in that moment, God, the Holy Spirit of God can whisper to the very parts of their heart, Lord, that there is a God and they need to turn to you. I thank you, Lord, that you're saving folks right now through this situation. Help us, God, to be the church, to trust in you, God, to lean in on what you're going to say to our lives this morning. Thank you, God, for our pastor and for his leadership. I pray that you give him wisdom. Lord, speak to us. God, you are the great I am. We praise you in that. In Jesus' name. So this is super weird, right? Uh, haven't done anything like this before. And uh, how are y'all doing worshiping in your PJs this morning? It's an odd experience, but something that God's hand is on. And I believe has provided a tremendous opportunity. I, I want to take the time. Our Sunday school lesson this morning was uh, on celebrating, on celebrating the works of others. And, and the team that is here today, those that you've seen and those behind the scenes, those that have been working all week, what a job they have done. How hard they have worked in this time of necessary separation. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you for tuning in this morning, maybe this evening if you're watching a recording. This is definitely not how we want to meet, not how we want to gather for worship. But how awesome is it that we can still be together without being together? I want to remind you again, if you're in our community, whether you're tied to the church or not, if you have any needs, food, toiletries, whatever, let us know. We're here for you. The church at Harmony Baptist wants to serve you. And I, I want to brag again on, on the volunteers from the grab-and-go lunches. 
What a tremendous effort the Chester County School District, York County School District has put in to make sure children are provided for educationally and nutritionally here in this week, this time where they're building this plane while they're flying it. Kudos to you and kudos to those that volunteered to come and serve those me uh, meals this week. Now we're launching a new series, The I Am's of Jesus. And this was a weird week to have to launch a new series, but I've been planning this for the last couple of months, and I believe that God's Word has a, a, a special purpose for us in this time of COVID-19. I believe this Word is timely. What better time than now to study and meditate on who Jesus says He is and what that means for us and for our futures. Now, my hope is that as we walk through today's scripture and through the coming weeks that you will see so clearly the hope that we have in Jesus and gather this assurance that he will bring that hope to reality one day. The I am's of Jesus, there are seven I am's in the gospel of John. I am the bread of life is the one we'll be in today in John 6, 35. I am the light of the world in John 8, 12. I am the door of the sheep in John 10, 7. I am the resurrection and the life in John eleven twenty five. 25. I am the good shepherd in John 10. I am the way, the truth, and the life in John 14, 6. And I am the true vine in John 15, 1. Each of these I am statements takes a symbol of the Jewish religious heritage and defines it through the lens of the Messiah, Jesus. Jesus, in talking to these uh, Jewish people, reveals how he fulfills the spiritual reality behind each of these religious symbols. But to understand these I am statements, to understand the I am's, we must begin at the beginning. And so we'll start this morning in Exodus 3. You don't have to turn there. I'll walk us briefly through this. This is a, the time where Moses is in the wilderness tending his flock and he sees this bush that is on fire and it's on fire and burning, but the leaves are not consumed. Moses, he's this soon-to-be leader of the Jewish exodus and he goes over to check this out and as he approaches this bush, God calls out to him and says, Moses, Moses. And he tells him, you better take your shoes off. This is my holy ground. And so he takes them off. And as he talks to Moses, God says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And so holy is this experience that Moses hides his face. He's overcome by who God is, who he's revealed to be. God goes on to command Moses to go to Egypt to bring his people Israel out of the land of Egypt. And Moses is a little scared about what this means for him. And he says, so God, in Exodus 3.13, if I come to the people of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God says to Moses, he reveals his name. He says, I am who I am. Am. And he says, say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. What a powerful declaration by the one true God. I am who I am. Brothers and sisters, God is everything that he says he is and, and, and is unchanging in all that he is. This name is, is so powerful because in the Bible, all names have meaning. This is simply not something God's calling himself. A name in the Bible denotes the strength of character or ability or mission. So we can see there's purpose behind this name. And we don't quite get that in our culture because we just name kids things that sound cool, right? Or name them after things in the world. Some of them may have meaning, but for the most part, we just like the way they sound. My son Hayden, for instance... He's named after the imaginary character Hayden Fox from that old uh, show Coach that used to play on TV. Now, when you look into it, Hayden actually means hellion, so we got that going for us. But when 
God says his name, when he names people in the Bible, it has meaning. And so when he says, I am, he's speaking of that meaning behind those names. The first meaning that we see is that he exists. He says, I am. I am real. I am personal and I am here. If you're tuning in today, I want you to understand God is real. He is real. He created you and he made you to love and worship him forever. He is real. I hope that you understand that. The second thing to gather is that the I am who I am means that God has always been. Nothing's made God. He's not a creation. He is the creator. He has created all things. He exists apart from anything else. He is, was, and always will be. And so holy is this name that the people of Israel, they wouldn't even speak it. What he revealed to Moses, they wouldn't even utter this name because it was holy. And it's just four letters from the Hebrew alphabet for us translated Y-H-W-H. And so they used the name Yahweh or Adonai in its place. You can see that in your translation as you read through your Bible. Anywhere you see the capital Lord, L-O-R-D, you could replace with this name, I am. And so we see this tremendous holiness, this respect that the Jews paid to such name. And they could see that if they wouldn't even pronounce it the way God revealed it, then we would say, if somebody said that that was their name, then all the Jews would put their full attention on that, right? So if somebody just walks up, if I was to say, I am, people would look at me and say, you not. But when somebody that does the things that Jesus does, when he steps out and says, I am, people pay attention and we had better do the same. And what we'll see this morning and for the next seven Sundays is that when Jesus says, I am, the people around him do listen. The Jews that listen to him are focused on him, but not to embrace him, but to reject and ridicule him. So let's dive into our scripture passage this morning and see how Jesus uses I am and what that means for us today. If you'll turn in your Bibles right there at home, to John 6, 25 through 59, or click the link right there in the interactive bulletin. It'll be on the screen in front of you as well. We'll read this, pray, and then see the meaning behind this I am. Beginning in verse 25. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what, 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 must, we be, uh, what must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, sir, Give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but will raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So the Jews grumbled about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not grumble among yourselves. 
No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he is who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. Let us pray. Father, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts that are open to your word. May your spirit teach us, Father, in this time. May May the blabberings of this useless man, Father, be turned into something great through the Holy Spirit, Father. May your word penetrate the innermost parts of our hearts that we may come to see you as you are, the glorious I am. And may that, Father, change everything about our lives. May we be closer to the image that you created as we pursue it. And you restore it as we leave this time of worship than we were when we began. Father, work in and through us. Bring salvation where it is needed, Father. Let the bread of life be eaten of and let us all be satisfied. I ask this in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen. The reality of life is that every one of us is looking for bread. That would have sounded like an odd statement just a couple of weeks ago, but now you go to the bread aisle at the grocery store and the shelves look like this. Bread in our lives and in the lives of the Israelites to whom Jesus was speaking was the most basic necessity. It is the most basic thing. And as long as the Jews could grow wheat or barley to make bread, they knew they'd be okay. They knew that they would have sustenance to survive. And the same is true for us. We know it because when snowstorms or crises occur, the first thing that flies off the shelf is bread and milk, which is just weird. But we know the power of bread. The problem is, our problem is that in our sinfulness, the pursuit of bread can become the foremost focus of our lives. And that's exactly what was happening around Jesus in John chapter 6. Just a few verses before, we see the day before that Jesus had fed 5,000 with five barley loaves and two fish. And then because of the, the bread that they had gotten, the miracle that they had seen. They wanted to force Jesus to be their king. They wanted to force him to be something that he already was, but not the way they wanted. And so Jesus, knowing what they wanted, he goes away onto the mountain, and the disciples, they get in their boats and go across the sea, and we see this great miracle of Jesus walking on the water in this, in this stormy gale. We see him come to the boat and get in and go to the other side. These miracles that God have, has worked. 
But they didn't see them as signs as to who Jesus was. They saw them as a way to have their needs met. So overwhelmed was this crowd by Jesus' Jesus's healing of the sick and his miracle of the bread that the crowd followed him the next day, rowing across this sea to Capernaum. These people were pursuing bread. They saw Jesus as a means to an end for their stomachs to be full. And Jesus knew why they came, and he, he chastises them as they come to him. He says in verse 26, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are not seeking, you are seeking me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. How awesome would it have been that all these crowds, all those people, had given up the life they knew in order to come and follow Jesus, that they would lay it all down, row across this sea, forget about whatever they had going on that day and go and follow him. But no, they were giving up their daily lives in pursuit of what they thought Jesus offered to their bellies. Jesus, as the Son of God, knew their hearts. As Proverbs 21, 2 says, every man's way is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. Jesus knew why they were there. And these people, they couldn't see the truth about Jesus, even when they had seen the miracles he performed with their own eyes. Sin had so corrupted them that they were consumed with what he offered and not who he is. He was not the precious gift they desired. He was just another way for them to fulfill the sinful gluttony of their hearts. And to be full of bread is good. It's needed for physical life, but a full stomach with an empty heart is worthless. It's worthless. And our dilemma today is just as bad, if not worse, because we have defined bread as more than just our daily food. It's more than just something on a plate in front of us to fulfill our, our hunger. Our bread has become all these things that we're pursuing, the things we feel we can't live without. And our definition of bread is multiplying rapidly. Bread is money. We pursue it with countless hours at work. We give up all these things that God has called us to in order to pursue that money. Just a few dollars more and I'll be happy, Lord. Bread is power. We'll step on people and over people that are hurting in order to have people serve us. Bread is fame. Technology is great in that it allows us to connect now, but we want people to know our name. Bread is sex. The pornography industry is booming. A multi-billion dollar industry on the premise that we want our lustful desires fulfilled at any cost. And bread, the definition goes on and on and on in our world. For every person, there may be another definition. And while all those things in and of themselves are good, they're gifts from God, money, power, fame, all of those things are given for God and are to be used for God. But none of them, not one of those things can satisfy an empty heart. And all of them have been stained by the brokenness of this world. So the question as we're here today is what bread of this earth are you pursuing that way? Is there something that you feel like you have to have in order to be complete? Is there something that you endeavor for, that you do everything you can to gather daily, weekly, moment to moment? Something that takes your eyes away from God. I want you to have eyes to see today that there is something more. That this bread of earth in whatever form it may take may be good, but Jesus is great. He's not good. There's no comparison. He is great. Those scales always tip to Jesus' side. And that when we pursue something, we must pursue Jesus. And we pursue Jesus for Jesus and nothing else.
Don't waste your life chasing something that has no eternal value. Your, your soul will outlive your bank account. Your name will be forgotten. Your eternity with Jesus will be forever. And Jesus tries to help the Israelites see this truth. He says to them in verse 27, Don't work, Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. And then he said to them, What must we do to be doing the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do? that we may see you, see and believe you. What work do you perform? Our fathers ate manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus says to them, truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Unlike anything of this world, Jesus will endure for eternity. When we come to Jesus for Jesus, then we are promised that we will endure with him. That is the hope that you can have in Jesus. The coronavirus may take away a life, but it cannot take us out of Jesus' hand. We can sing a song like we did a few minutes ago that says, when the sickness comes and takes my child away, there's nothing I can do. We cannot beat this on our own, but we can hope in Jesus. We can hope. His word says, Jesus promises us in John 10, 28, I, will get, I give them eternal life, and they will never perish he says this, no one will snatch them out of my hand. Nothing can take you away from Jesus Christ. We don't have to worry and panic and stockpile nine millimeters and toilet paper because we are his. And your part in this is so simple. Did you catch it in verse 29? It says, Jesus answered them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. All that, re that is required of us is faith. All you must do is believe. And even that is given by God. Ephesians 2.8, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Even in the most basic part of our part in this, God has made it easy. All we have to do is believe. And if you're at home today, if you're struggling with life, unsure of what your future holds, in the light of the brokenness of this world today, in the light of COVID-19, in the light of the evil of this word, world, just believe. Believe. Believe that Jesus Christ is who his word says he is. It's just that easy. But for so many, that is oh so hard. For even the Israelites that had just witnessed Jesus do these miracles. He's healing the sick. He turns five loaves and two fish into food of surplus for 5,000. They couldn't believe. They wanted more proof. This unbelieving crowd demanded more proof from Jesus. Being that it was the Passover, they had the Exodus scriptures near to mind, and they all tell Jesus, they say, hey, Moses brought down manna from heaven. What are you going to do? Can you repeat that? Can you bring down bread from heaven for us? See, I believe these people wanted to believe that Jesus was the Messiah, but their preconceptions about what the Messiah would do kept them from being able to see that he was right in front of them. 
Some of the ancient Jewish writings said that the new Messiah would reopen the storehouse of, Mas of manna in heaven for them. That this Messiah would come and he would rain down those blessings just as God had done before. And we all want to see a miracle today too, right? We talk about it so often. I hear people talk about, why don't we see miracles anymore? And some people say, I could believe if I could just see some proof. If I could just see a miracle for myself, I know I could believe. Brothers and sisters, the word is proof. This precious word has endured 2,000 years of doubt, 2,000 years of people cr crushing it, tearing it apart. It stands. This is all we need for faith right here. All we need. Forget manna, forget any other miracle. The word is where faith finds us. Jesus quoted Deuteronomy 8, 3 to Satan. He knows the power of the word. He teaches it. He quotes Deuteronomy 8, 3 to Satan in Matthew 4, 4 as he's being tempted. He says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. That is the true deepest need of your heart. To see the revealed Savior in his word. That is where we find the bread of life. We don't see, need to see manna on the ground because the bread of heaven has come down in the man named Jesus. Jesus is the bread of life. And our faith in him is the nourishment we need for eternal life. When Jesus declares, I am the bread of life, he claims for all to hear, for us to read. In the original language, he declares equality with God. He is saying, as God said to Moses, I am, I say to you, I am. And we miss it in English. Because you can read right through it because it's just I am. But the two words used for I am in the Greek translation, ego, which sounds like something you might be eating right now, and ami are the same words used in the Septuagint, uh, Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Old Testament in Exodus 3 as God speaks from the burning bush to Moses, naming himself, I am. Those words are what Jesus speaks as he says, I am the bread of life. Ego a me, I, I am. And with Jesus' choice of words, it would be impossible for those gathered around to miss what he is saying. He is saying, I am God. Jesus is the Son of God. The second person of the Holy Trinity. And as he stood before these men, he stood, stood fully God and fully man. And today, nothing has changed. He is still I am. He is fully God, seated in the place of authority at the right hand of God, interceding for us with his Father. From now until he returns, anyone that believes in him will have eternal life. They will never hunger or thirst spiritually because he is the ever-satisfying bread of life. He alone. He is the bread of life because he has defeated death. They couldn't see that then. They couldn't see that he was what he said he was, what his word says he is. And men like these unbelieving Jews in Capernaum could not bear his claims to be God. So according to the plan of the Father, they delivered Jesus, the great I am, over to be tortured and beaten and mocked. In Jerusalem, they delivered him to have his flesh torn and his blood poured out to take the wrath of God for sin upon his sinless body and to die once and for all as the eternal sacrifice for all sin. But brothers and sisters, death could not hold him. And three days later, he rose from the dead, victorious over sin and death. 
He ascended into heaven and he rules over all things and he will return a conquering king to raise up all those that have eaten and had their fill from the bread of life. Have you fed on this bread? Have you been satisfied in your soul by the bread of life, by Jesus Christ? Have you stopped pursuing the bread of earth, all the things you think you need to be content? Have you stopped pursuing those for the far greater bread of life that never fails to satisfy the longings of our heart? If you haven't, let today be the day that you have your fill of Jesus Christ and begin to see what it is like to truly be whole in this world of brokenness. He alone will mend your brokenness. He alone will mend your body. And brothers and sisters, I believe right now, God seems to be stripping away everything that we have found to be more precious than Jesus. He's stripping away all those pursuits of bread that don't matter for eternity. And I hope that we are paying attention. This week, we've all had time to slow down and to pay attention to what God is saying. You've had time to feast on God's word more than usual. You've had time to spend time with the blessings that he's given us. And I hope that we can recognize once this time of crisis pass, what is truly important. Because brothers and sisters, this virus will end and we'll have a choice to make. Will we seek the bread of earth or the bread of life? God is glorified in only one, the bread of life. And we are in a time of tremendous opportunity for the gospel of Jesus. As the word world panics and fear runs through the minds of many, I believe the Spirit of God is opening the eyes of many to the truth of His word. God is showing people that He is real and they are sinful. They are seeing that life is but a mist and oh so delicate with spiritual eyes open. I believe there are those out there that are hungry for salvation. And every believer here and viewing today have been right where they are. Our eyes have been opened by God. We've had this understanding that we are doomed without someone to help us. We've been hungry to find the solution to the problem of sin. So brothers and sisters, we must tell them, dear church at Harmony Baptist, any believers that are listening, we must tell them about the bread of life, Jesus Christ. Pastor Jimmy Scroggins says it this way, we are just beggars trying to tell other beggars where to find bread. And if we are to be a church that makes disciples of all people in all places to the glory of God, then we must share this bread. Look for ways to meet the needs of those that are hurting in this time and share this bread. Look for people that are scared and pursuing every other kind of bread and share this bread, the bread of life, Jesus Christ. The bread aisles may be empty at the grocery stores, but brothers and sisters, the bread of life will never run out. Where we live, work, play, and learn, let us share this bread. For it is the only hope now and for all eternity. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I pray that this bread is the pursuit of our lives, Father, that this tremendous adventure that you have placed us on to be your people, Father, would be the longing of our heart that we would seek this bread with all that we have, that we would give up every dollar we have, that we would give up every time that we spent pursuing other things in order to pursue Jesus. And that in that pursuit, Father, you be glorified. In this pursuit of Jesus, Father, let us 
Let us live out the reason we were created to love and worship you forever and ever. It is only through Jesus that we have that. So, Father, I pray if there are those at home right now, those that you are speaking salvation into their lives, Father, that they would come to you, pray in repentance and profess Jesus as Lord. If there are those that are caught up in sin, Father, your children that have been caught up in sin, caught up in pursuing all these other things, pursuing the bread that rots and molds, Father, that right now you would drive them to this bread of life, that they would pursue Jesus and you would restore them as your children and they would see the joy that comes through that. Thank you, Father, for your word and for its blessings. May we dive deeply into them today and every day to see more of who you are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I never You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Cause you're perfect in all of your ways, perfect in all of your ways, you are perfect in all of your ways to us, you are perfect in all who I am, 
He is a good, good father. Thank you for joining us for worship online today. Another big thank you to this team and all that they do in order for us to gather and to worship in spirit and in truth. I pray if God's spoken to you that you'll reach out to, to one of the pastors here, one of the leaders here, somebody to talk about how God has moved in your life. If he's brought you to salvation, reach out. <coughs> We'll gather around you as a body of believers to help you to walk down this path that God is calling you in pursuit of the bread of life. We won't have any church activities uh, through next Sunday. We'll be live online again next Sunday. We'll hope you'll tune in. Look on social media and YouTube for announcements that come out about different uh, things that are going on. We'll be, if we have to, uh, continue to make changes. We'll update through those avenues and through ChurchCast. Thank you for being patient with us. We pray that you remain safe and that God will bless you and keep you. Let us pray as we close. Father in heaven, may your blessings shine upon us. Father, may those that are tuned in and listening or will listen, Father, may they see the tremendous power in the name of Jesus, may they live for your glory. And may you bless them and keep them. May your face shine upon them. May they meditate day and night on your word and live to make disciples of all people in all places for your glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.